Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. This is Vincent Chan. In this lecture, we are going to continue what we learned from the previous lecture, which is the CMOS rail-to-rail -rail up end, and uh, focus on solving so-called input common mode range. And also, I'm going to because I threw a question at the last of. Uh, at the end of the last lecture, but I'm, I'm also going to explain, going to answer the quest question I gave you in the previous lecture. CMOS rail to rail up end part two, input common mode range. So this is circuit we study in the previous lecture, which is called rail to rail CMOS up end. The left hand side is developed by an input differential stage. And the right hand side of the rail to rail is developed by a PMOS input differential stage. So, because we are going to do some calculation, then let me give you some data. Assume all transistors are operating at equal overdrive voltage of 0.3 volt and have the same threshold voltage of 0.7 volt. So, which means the overdrive is defined as the VGS minus VT. Of course, we use the absolute sign to cover, to include the both the MOS and the PMOS expression. So 1 minus 0 0.7 equals 0 0.3. And then this is the assumption. For the Casco CMOS amen. So let's just revisit what we learned before. So I just changed the slide. Hold on. From for rail to rail CMOS up end back to its predecessor, okay, which is the 4D Casco CMOS up end. In 4D Casco CMOS up end, we've done this before. We also assumed Q9 and Q10 operated at age of what? Age of saturation. And then, so we're going to do the same thing. The MOSFETs associated with the IB, uh, which coming from the Q9 and the Q10 in the previous slide, are operated at the age of saturation. So which means when you analyze the, the cross voltage, the terminal voltage of the IB, you simply just put on 0 0.3, all right? So try to find the input common mode range for this rail to rail up end. So I want you to spend maybe five minutes try to solve this to find the input comma mode range. Input comma mode range for this rail to rail up end. Let's pause for five minutes. We study, I explained, I solved the input common mode range before for different circuit from the basic, the basic uh, differential amplifier and for the up end, I solved the 40 casco CMOS up ends input common mode range. And this one, let's do this first. Input common mode range. Let's connect the inverting to, because it's the common mode, and uh, non inverting together. So VC, VCM on the left, and also you see the VCM on your right. Okay? Two VCM, input common mode. And the left hand side common mode is the common mode for the MOS input stage. The right hand side common mode is the common mode for the PMOS input stage. So range where the MOS input stage operates. Okay? At within what range the MOS input stage will operate properly? 0 0.3, remember how, how we did this? We just, mm -hmm, right? 0 0.3 and another 
0.3, and then go up one volt. Okay, so the answer 2.9. Right? Down from 2.5, down 0.3, down another 0.3, and go up 0.1. I don't know, go up one volt. Okay? So think about this. 2.5, right? This is 2.5. And down 0.1, uh, there's a 0.3, another 0.3, and go up one volt, like this. 2.9 over exceed the positive supply voltage. And then what? Then the negative, they still focus on the MOS input stage. So from 2.5, negative 2.5, and up 0 0.3, and up 1 volt. So negative 1.2. So for MOS, input stage operates properly. The range is between negative 1.2 and 2.9 volt. We solved this before. It's all the same. The answer is same as the one I taught the, I think it's the fourth lecture of the 40 casco CMOS RPM. Okay? If I, you think I went too quickly, the rhythm is too fast, my teaching rhythm is too fast, then you go back, revisit, review the lecture I just mentioned. Okay? So now let's switch to the PMOS side, the PMOS input stage side. Let's go to the right hand side. So for the right hand side, it should be something something like this, right? So down 0 0.3. And then down 1 volt. So the answer, 1.2, right? So 2.5 positive, 0 0.3, and the 1 volt, 1.2. So what about the negative direction? In the minimum direction, is from starting from negative 2.5, so raised 0 0.3. And raise another, this is one, just try to remind you, 0 0.3 represent, assume all MOSFETs associated with IB are operating at the age of saturation, okay? And then another 0 0.3, and down one volt. So what's the answer? Negative 2.9. This is interesting. Let's do it again. This is the negative 2.5, negative 2.5, up 0 0.3, and up 0 0.3, and down what? Down one volt, like here. So negative 2.9. So it's below negative supply. Below negative supply. So bring back the previous 1.2. So this is the range, all right? So I want to give you the big picture of this. Within this range, MOS, PMOS will operate well. PMOS input stage will operate properly. And for bring back the MOS input stage, then within this range, You see the red, blue, green, purple, right? So the input common range is actually from 2.9, negative 2.9 to positive 2.9. But there's a subtle difference between this, this those be, when you crunch this, this number. Pay attention to the symbol I highlight here. I said the VCM in minimum. VCM in maximum. So which means within this range, negative 1.2 to positive 2.9, this is the range where MOS input stage will operate properly, right? And within right, go look at the right hand side. Within the negative 2.9 to positive 1.2, within this range, 
this is the range where PMAS input stage will operate properly. So now, here's the input common range, the big picture. So within this range, wait, 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 hold on. So four numbers, negative 2.9, negative 1.2, positive 1.2, and positive 2.9, right? Okay, so four numbers is gonna divide three zones. So this is, so within the negative 1.2, between one, negative 1.2 within the pink range, both stages will operate properly. If you above 1.2, then PMAS fell out. So only MAS operates properly, right? So between 1.2 to 2.9, only MAS operate properly. So same thing, below negative 1.2, then MOS out. So only PMOS means the PMOS input stage operates properly. So this is why I explain this in detail. This is the related to the quest question I gave you at the end of the last lecture the previous lecture, okay? In the previous lecture, at the end of the previous lecture, I ask you to think about this. In what condition this is true? Under what condition this gain expression is true? What's the constraint? Under what condition this gain expression can be applied? In other words, under what condition, under what bias condition the RBM will show, will present, will demonstrate this kind of game. So the answer, of course, these two Norton should be valid. These two Norton should be enabled, should be activated. These two input stage, both input stage should function properly. Only under this condition can this gain expression apply. In other words, only within this range, the input common bias, the input common bias within the negative 1.2, the DC bias, the input DC bias, only within negative 1.2 to positive 1.2, only within this range, this circuit will demonstrate this kind of two GM are out, small signal voltage gain. If it's above, if it's over, beyond this range, let's say if on the top, that M mass input stage operate, P mass out. Which means, think about the previous slide, the two Norton. So only left hand side Norton works. Right hand side Norton fell. Has no meaning at all. So half, cut in half. So what's the GM associated with in this expression, of course, it's the MRS, the transconductance. So when it's below negative 1.2, you also cut in half. PMOS works well, but MRS is out. So the GMR out on the bottom, the which transconductance this GM is associated with, the PMOS transconductance. I hope this slide can make the connection between the so-called ICMR, the DC bias, with a small signal gain, okay? This is also something that confuses many engineers. They don't have the strong foundation, so they kind of messed up. Between the common mode, the DC, AC, differential mode, small signal, 
etc. I hope this slide can give you a total picture, a big picture, and lay you a good foundation in this area. All right, so we have come to the end of this lecture. Thanks for watching.